try to play it, but you're never gonna beat me Look the other way, what I'm doing ain't easy Bloody hands stain from the people who deceive me Muddy hands break through the chains, go free me Looking for change, looking for pain Pulling a mob, pushing a train I'll never stop, stick to a lane Pick up the pieces and go re- You good? I wasn't gonna do anything, I was ready What's up, Reefers? Welcome back to another episode of Zoa Tank Boys! In this episode, guys, we're gonna talk about what do I do to dose the Red Sea 350? Let's go. All right, Reef First, so as you guys just saw in this episode, we're gonna talk about what I dose in the Red Sea 350. Now guys, before we begin, don't forget the easiest way to support this channel is to like and subscribe and leave a comment that lets us know that you like what you're seeing. So Hector, are you ready? I was born ready. All right, so let's take a look at the aquarium, guys. The aquarium is doing crazy, crazy, crazy. We're just getting ready for Aquashella because we're gonna buy so many corals. Can't wait to see you guys there. Hopefully, if we guys, see, if you guys see us, say hello. Say hello. Red Sea 350, I've only been dosing for um, about two months now, maybe two months, give or take, not too long. I do have the Kamor dosing pumps, I believe is the second version. I am dosing Brightwell, part one and part two. Let's not talk anymore and just jump right in. Let's go. All right guys, so as you guys can see up there, I have my dosing pumps. Guys, super, super simple setup. I have one pump dosing 15 milliliters of part one, part A and 15 milliliters of part B daily. When, when, when does your dosing start? So I dose early, early in the morning. So roughly around seven in the morning. Now guys, I will tell you something that I realized little by little was I first started dosing five milliliters a day. And then as some of my corals grew, I had to up my dosing because it started consuming so much more alkalinity, way more than calcium. So let's put the lens on the, on the camera. That way we could truly see some of the corals and you can see how some of the colonies of SPS um, have really been taking off. If you guys have been following the channel, you guys know that recently we went to Top Shelf Aquatics and did some testing. So I did realize my alkalinity was super low, even though I calculated everything a while back when I started dosing. So one thing you'll notice is the more your corals grow, the more trace elements they will consume. So to give you an example, I started dosing part A and part B bright well, um, five milliliters a day when the corals were a little bit smaller. And honestly guys, it feels like in the last two months I've had a, a freaking outburst of growth from the Montipora up there, the Grafton Montipora, the Grafton Montipora, in the back, the Satosa, the Christmas tree, I believe it's the Christmas uh, Montipora. Season's greeting. Season's greeting Montipora. So a lot of the SPS have really been taking off. And of course, the larger they get, the more trace element they will consume. Now, if you guys see in the back, that Garth Bonsai started to bleach a little bit. And that was one of the indicators for me that I needed to start dosing a little bit more and or double check my trace elements. So when I went to Top Shelf, if you guys saw that episode, the alkalinity was sitting at, point, at 6 um, ppm, and we wanted to raise that to at least 8 to 9. So I tested it today. It's been about a week, and we're sitting at a little bit over 7.0. So I just stepped it up from 5 parts per million. Last week, I was about 10, and then today, I'm sitting at 15. So you'll notice a lot of the soft corals won't necessarily require a lot of that extra trace element. However, once we start talking SPS, Montipora, if you guys look up here, you'll notice that we have a green slimer in the back. We have that Sunset Monty that I just picked up from Top Shelf Aquatics. So all of these corals really consume a lot of these trace elements. Now, of course, the more they grow, the more I am gonna have to step up my dosing. So what I'm gonna do is, I am testing weekly, but I am also gonna have to just start monitoring it a little bit more just because the good thing about getting growth is, you know, you have an explosion of coral, which is awesome. However, you have to keep up with the demand. So like I said, right now I am dosing part A and part B. 
bright well, which is uh, one part alkalinity and one part calcium. Leave a comment below and let me know if you dose something else, how that works out for you. I've seen people dose calc loser and tons of other things. The reason why I chose Part A and Part B from Bite World, to be honest with you, is because a lot of the people that recommended it to me told me it was super easy to calculate. Um, I downloaded a calculator that helps me kind of monitor um, the dosing regimen, so it was super easy, and there's a lot of room for error. So, so far, so good. Again, the lights have been on all day, so not all the corals are super open, but like I said, right now I'm dosing about 15 parts per million of Part A and Part B, and of course, I feel pretty confident that I'm going to have to keep doing that. You want to slowly increase your dosing because if you dose too quickly on um, alkalinity, um, you can't melt your corals. All right, Hector. So regarding dosing, would you say that you need to dose if you're a beginner reefer with a new aquarium? So you can definitely get away with without dosing for quite a while. But when your coral starts to grow and needs and starts consuming more of the trace elements that your water changes cannot provide, that's when you need the dosing so that you can kind of counteract that. So how long would you say that my Red C350 has been out before I started dosing? Um, probably almost a year and a half, almost two years. And I think it, we saw pretty good success just with water changes. Yeah, no, definitely. He's, he's honestly only been doing water changes. He just recently started doing the dosing um, because as you can see, there's a lot of growth in this tank from probably the previous episodes you've seen before. Now, Hector, in your aquarium, do you dose? So for you guys that don't know, Hector has a 34 gallon bio cube. Um, are you dosing or how are you regulating that aquarium? So honestly, I just do it by water changes. I feel like I have enough coral where, I feel like my corals haven't grown enough where I need to do any dosing. I feel like water changes are, are pretty sufficient. Okay, now guys, once you start introducing SPS, right? Stone polyp stony, small polyp stonies, those are the ones that are going to consume the trace element to build their calcium skeleton. Zoanthids, mushrooms, even a lot of the LPS won't consume as much um, alkalinity as you may think. Um, if you guys, if you guys check out our Instagram, I have a huge logo. I have a colony of echinatas and they don't consume as much as what an SPS would. Even some of the smaller fries consume a decent amount of the trace elements. So that's why I don't really need to do any dosing in my tank. That's why I mostly just do the water changes. And it makes my tank happy. As you guys can see through our Instagram, you guys can see the growth that I've gotten just through water changes. Excellent. I agree. Guys, if you are dosing, leave a comment below. But again, even after dosing, I would say this is a super simple setup, guys. I got my Camor dose pumps right here. I got one dosing alkalinity, one ca uh, dosing calcium. I have the bright well right over here, right? We have code A, which um, I believe A is calcium and B is alkalinity. I have them both right here and they are feeding to the aquarium right over there. My refugium's going strong, skimmer's doing okay. Super simple, guys. Do not overcomplicate it. Let me know what your thoughts are. Literally, I haven't done a water change in about two, three weeks. I feel like my, here, let me put the lens on. I feel, I feel like the refugium is finally starting to help. I feel like the refugium is finally starting to take off and, you know, take out some of the nitrates. When we tested it, it was sitting at about 10 to 15. When typically I'm about 20 to 25 between water changes. So I'm going to test again nitrates, see how everything is sitting. But guys, Zoanthids love dirty water. Acans, Duncans, they don't mind the dirty water. The SPS are going to be the only ones that may get a little finicky. But again, once your tank has been running for a little while, as long as you can regulate your parameters, guys, you're doing pretty good. One tail sign that his tank is doing really good. If you guys check out these zoanthids right here with the speckles, these are called exospheres. These are very hard to grow. They take a very long time to grow. You kind of need a, a system that's almost on autopilot for you to start growing heads. As you can see, look how many heads we have. We started with one for the longest period of time. All right, Reefers, so we hope you guys enjoyed this week's episode of Zoan Tank Boys. 
Don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave a comment, and let us know that you like what you're seeing. Hold on, hold on. I forgot one thing. I cannot end this episode, guys, without giving one of you guys a shout out. So we're gonna put that comment right here. Guys, like we said earlier, we're gonna be at Aquashella, so if you see us, stop, say hi, take a picture, comment, let us know that you know who the heck we are, we appreciate it, we love it. Till next time, Zola, Zola Tech Boys, out. out.